They're combing the streets. Searching house to house. If they arrest you two, they will take you to their headquarters, and you will not return. I'm more concerned with a six-foot cat man who's got claws that can cut through vibranium alloy. By my count, that makes two super soldiers loose in Paris. Three. Counting you. And that's two too many. Be there before the sun rises, before the Germans, before that American. The eye of force has been found. Please, just stick to the rooftops. Be careful, stand with me. When am I not? It's better if I tackle this one alone. You may. Encounter some obstacles. That won't be a problem. Our cat friend is definitely here, too. And by the look of things, he's not very far ahead. The American boy is right on your heels. Who the hell are you? If you wanted us dead, we'd be dead. So what do you want? Answers. That's far enough! Stay out of my way! Stay Aside. I do not take orders from anyone! I don't have time for this. Neither do I. So, if you all are ready, let's switch the feed and go back to that bridge environment. And let's see, yep, you're live, good, okay. So Colin, let's boom down and take a closer look at this environment. So to create a really immersive game experience, the characters and environments have to work together harmoniously. We can't just drop believable characters into a less than convincing world. So we need to start with authentic and densely detailed environments as the setting to our story. And look, because part of our story is set in 1940s occupied Paris, we needed the word world to have a really believable and visceral level of detail and grit, as you can see here. So Roman, why don't we focus on the ground here for a bit? Now look at that. That's an amazing amount of detail. It would have been nearly impossible to get something this complex to run in real time without the new features in 5.4. So, Kim, let's talk about some of the levels of detail that we're seeing here. Sure. So, we're talking about Nanite's new adaptive tessellation feature. So, whilst Nanite lets you create environments like you're seeing here of incredible detail, the memory requirements can become impractical to realize for such a level of complexity across a huge level without the need for lots of instancing. And we thought that was a challenge and we wanted to deal with it. Mm -hmm. um, so Colin, let's actually strip this scene right down to the dirt so folks can see what we're talking about. So, see how simple, this is relatively simple ground plane. Actually, let's, um, let's show the triangles so you can actually see what's there. Just a few hundred triangles, let's pop it back to the beauty render view. Um, but with this new dynamic tessellation capability, we can actually displace that simple geometry and create new three-dimensional geometry of the quality that you're used to with Nanite. With nothing more than layering tile textures and using shader logic, you can make incredibly complex effects. So instead of me trying to explain it, <laughs> let's get Colin to show the magic, and uh, let's see a transformation of this face. This technique allows you to see an unprecedented level of geometric detail, but it's also memory efficient and can be changed dynamically in the runtime of your game. So things like footprints or tire tracks or even supernatural effects, <laughs> if you such want, so would want them, can be visualized. And just to show how this ge simple geometry has now been transformed, let's have a look at the triangle view again. There you go. What you expect from Nanite. So it's a really, really smart, interesting technique to actually get details in the, into the games without crazy, crazy amounts of geometry.
I'm going to switch it back to the uh, detail view. Thank you. Um, and of course, as you can imagine, this technology isn't just useful for the ground and for the ground terrain. It applies to every detail in the environment. So let's fly over to that pile of objects on the left over there, for example. And Colin, while we do, can you kill those headlights for me? Cool. Thank, thank you. Okay, so imagine our challenge. We're trying to authentically recreate a harsh winter in occupied Paris. That means every prop, every object, every detail, every rooftop needs to be realistically blanketed in snow. So now let's show how we can dial up the snow accumulation on these objects. Right? And of course, we can dial it back as desired. It's making me feel chilly, actually. Yeah, actually, it's a little cold up here. Well, maybe she's um, nervous. Uh, <laughs> and remember, of course, like Kim said, thanks to this technology, this is all actual geometry. So you can see how tools like these would really empower even a small team to art direct and set dress their environments dynamically. It enables our artists to create a series of layers in the environment and then build up the complexity layer by layer by layer. Now, speaking of set dressing, let's go check out that fire barrel over by the watchtower we saw earlier. Yeah, that's the one there. And let's turn on a light to really illuminate the smoke coming out of the barrel. Thank you. Look at that. That's amazing. We could have never achieved effects this realistic in the past. So this is what we call a heterogeneous volumes. In the past, effects like these would be done with particle sprites. But that's kind of a cheat that often breaks down and can look flat. It's nice from afar, but far from nice, as we say <laughs> back in the UK. Um, so if we look at the glow of the fire on, as it dynamically illuminates the volumetric smoke, you can see that, that light transmitting through the volume. You can also see that the smoke itself is casting shadows onto the world, but also itself. These volumetrics can also mix with more traditional effects as well. So if you do want to put particles in there, fog, or even cards, you can do it. It all works in a, in a unified way. You can run the simulation, the, the smoke simulation, in Unreal Engine natively if you want, or you can import open VDB data sets as sparse volume textures, resulting in film quality visual effects, volumetric visual effects, all running in real time that total, are totally responsible to di responsive to dynamic lighting. Yeah, and it, it, it just looks incredible. Now, uh, of course, all of this is just to help us tell our story, right? And the story is nothing without great characters. So let's head back over to the bridge and catch up with Cap. Now, an essential part of any character's persona, particularly a Marvel hero, is their look. And it can be really distracting if the outfit doesn't look as realistic and believable as the rest of the world. As you can see, Cap's leather uniform fits just like you would expect in real life, with all the correct material properties and the complexity of creases forming as he moves. From a technical perspective, this is where we can effectively utilize machine learning. We can set up and run complex simulations in a package like Houdini and import that data into UE. We then use this to train an ML model, producing film quality deformations that run in real time. But None of this matters without great facial performances. So let's bring Azuri, T'Challa's grandfather and our Black Panther, into this scene, this time with his mask off. But I know who you are, Captain. America's hero, dancing around in red, white, and blue underwear. That shield that you hide behind does not belong to you. You are unworthy of it. Right, and as he pauses here, Roman, why don't you go in really close and really show everybody the detail that we have in these models. Um, it's, it's insane, right? It's like, amazing. Uh, it's essential for us to retain every nuance of the outstanding performance that our actor, Kari Payton, brought to Azuri's character. What you just saw there were untouched MetaHuman animator solves. Mm -hmm. So working with the MetaHuman process, we've been able to honor our amazing actors' performances and faithfully transform them into equally powerful digital performances. Now, of course, it all starts with the actor's talent, and we're fortunate to have two of our cast with us in the audience today. So I'd like to introduce Drew Moorline, who plays Captain America. <laughs> Yay! Yeah. <laughs> Yay! And, uh, and Kari Payton, our Black Panther. See, they hug, they're friends. They're not really fighting. It's, it's all good. Um, and of course, I want to take this opportunity to thank them and the rest of our wonderful cast for going on this incredibly crazy journey with us. 
Uh, and now, as a special treat, uh, let's take a look at the entire bridge scene that you saw earlier. But this time, we'll keep Azuri's mask off to really showcase what we can do when all this incredible talent and all these amazing features come together. But remember, this is running entirely in real time. Awesome. That's far enough! I'm here on the business of the United States government. Yours is not the only business here. Stay out of my way. Stand aside. I do not take orders from anyone. Turn around, boy. Go home. Look, pal, I don't know who you are. But I know who you are. Captain, America's hero, dancing around in red, white, and blue underwear. Says the man dressed like an overgrown house cat. That shield that you hide behind does not belong to you. You are unworthy of it. I don't have time for this. Neither do I. In Satara, there are six distinct combat classes and 18 weapons. All classes can manipulate space and time, giving players a unique battle experience. Players can travel through space and go to designated time zones to gain advantage during thrilling battles. Data layer 기능을 사용하여 로딩 없이 실시간으로 변하는 과거, 현재, 미래의 세테라 월드를 구현하였고, 이를 통해 We've used data layers to create real-time environments and layer them on top of one another to enable players to travel through past, present, and future states of the Cetera landscape seamlessly. Players can gain additional resources through traveling to the past and fight against stronger enemies in the future. In this instance, we're traveling from the present to the future. World Partition 기능을 사용하여 12제곱킬로미터 이상의 랜드스케이프 약 50만 개의 액터를 구현하였고 이를 통해 게이머분들은 친구들과 함께 자유로운 월드 탐험의 재미를 느낄 수 있습니다. World Partition allows us to efficiently create a massive open world exceeding 12 square kilometers with about a half million actors and then stream it smoothly to enhance the cinematic look and feel of the environment all while allowing for multiplayer adventures. 극도로 자유로운 커스터마이징 기능을 통해 수많은 유저가 자신의 개성을 표현하며 게임을 즐길 수 있도록 구현하였습니다. And finally, through our extremely flexible customization system, players can freely express their personality by creating their character, ensuring that each character you meet in Satera is as unique as your own. We needed to build a world of discovery, exploration, and survival. And for this, we turn to Unreal Engine. It comes with the flexibility of the Blueprint system so we can set up those sandbox interactions. It provides a world-leading renderer for amazing visuals, and thanks to Nanite, we can use high-poly models at all distances, making the landscape something truly epic to behold. To build our world, we use Houdini with Unreal 
to generate landscapes with a non-destructive workflow that allows our level designers to sculpt and regenerate without causing issues. And for June, we knew that our sand had to be world-class. Using Unreal plugins such as Fluid Ninja, we were able to build sand displacement technology that reacts to small details like footprints from a player's walk or run. And finally, Lumen provides a lighting system that combines global illumination and bounce lighting to make both our exteriors and our interiors look truly stunning. For us, working with the Unreal Engine toolset, collaborating with our partners at Legendary, and working in the universe that was created by Frank Herbert and brought to life by Denis Villeneuve has been truly inspirational and exciting, and a lot of hard work as well. Humans have always had this drive to create, to build worlds, whether in text, on screens, or in games. As a company, we've been on this journey for a long time, crafting open worlds where players can live out their dreams and fantasies. So with that, we're very excited to share our latest trailer with you. Thank you very much for listening. Let's take a look. When I saw the complexity that Dune 2 was going to have from its pre-production perspective and from its planning perspective, I realized that being able to use Unreal Engine, being able to have control over light staging all in pre-production was only ever going to speed up the process. A large part of what we used Unreal for was to pre-plan the shots that we were trying to achieve so that we were able to then put metahuman characters into the location to pre-plan when the shadow was going to reveal them, when the shadow was going to be off them. So using Unreal in pre-production was a godsend. The guys the making the Dune Awakening game have been quite inspired by the world that we had built in Dune Part 1. And they've built a world which continues the world that we built on film and actually probably even expands upon it and builds a world that's greater than the film that we've made. And what excites me going forward in the future is that you know, you've got gaming on this side and film on this side, and they've been very separated up until now. But slowly they're coming together, and I think right now we're at a point where they're literally crossing over. And I think the skills from gaming technology and the skills from filmmakers are going to cross-pollinate and become useful for each other. Arrakis is a test. Few survive it. Arrakis is a test. Few survive it.
but the humans that do. Awaken. I'm glad you're here. The crew's been waiting for you, and we're ready to help you build what's next. Come on, let's go. Heavy humans are now available for import into UEFN as non-player characters. <clears throat> Thank you. So, Michael's jumped us back into the editor so we can get a look at our captain behind the scenes. As you can see, we carefully optimized for both quality and efficiency. We've gone from almost one gig for a hero metahuman down to approximately 60 megs in UEFN with an average complexity hairstyle. And we wanted to make this process as easy as possible. You just save your custom metahumans in the metahuman creator. This captain character was based on the Rue metahuman preset. Once you have your creations saved in my metahumans, they'll be available to you in our new metahuman importer in UEFN. And depending on your project's requirements, there are also multiple quality options for you to choose from. Now, we can't talk about metahumans without also addressing the workflow creators use for creating costumes. There are many ways to author clothing, but in this case, we're using Marvelous Designer, a leading digital clothing software. In fact, we worked with our friends at Clo, the makers of Marvelous Designer and Clo 3D, to integrate our metahuman body data into their software and provide a new USD export option for your garments. That export includes geometry, materials, and the data you need for simulation setup. Now on screen, you're seeing the garment that was exported for Marvelous Designer being brought into the cloth panel editor in UE 5.4, and from there, we're setting up custom chaos simulations that have realistic cinema quality looks. As part of this tech in the upcoming UE 5.4, we're introducing an auto sim setup that has sim data and ingest, auto LOD generation, and auto skinning. In addition, you always have the option to take a more bespoke approach like we have here if you want more iterations and finer control. Okay, cloth physics are available in UEFN as early access starting today, and now we'd like to show you how easy it is to dress a metahuman character. Michael's gonna demonstrate this for us live in the UEFN editor. All right, take it away, Michael. Thanks, Pat. So the first thing we're gonna do is hide the default outfit that came in from Metahuman Creator. Next, we'll add a new uh, chaos cloth component. This allows us a place to drop our new dynamic uh, cloth object. This was actually created in Marvelous Designer, set up in UE 5.4, and imported here into UEFN. Now that we have that, let's uh, add a new animation so we can see how the cloth moves. Then we come down to the cloth, turn on simulate, and just like that, we have moving cloth here inside UEFN. <laughs> All right, cool. So from there, our metahuman is ready to be used in the game. And we're really excited to offer cloth physics in UEFN for the first time. It's so important for creating convincing characters. And you're not limited to clothing on characters. You can use cloth physics anywhere in your environment. At last year's State of Unreal, you saw the power of MetaHuman Animator in UE, and we're pleased to say that those same tools are now available to creators in UEFN. And don't forget, using our latest character device, you can also add a performance to some of your favorite Fortnite characters. You might have seen this in the recent Joke Night experience produced by Trevor Noah. For getting capture data into UEFN, we recommend using our new LiveLink Hub application. This allows almost all capture devices that can stream to UE5 to also stream directly into UEFN and get recorded there. Even more third-party devices will be supported in LiveLink Hub soon. Mm -hmm. 